Welcome back to Chat Shit. Now the season's wrapped up and we made some bold predictions at the start of the year. We had a video where we talked through our, our ladder from top to bottom, 1 to 18. We said who we think our Brownlow medalist is going to be. We predicted the Coleman and we predicted the two grand finalists and who's going to win it all. Now we're going to go through the ladder from 1 to 18 and our course for Brownlow and Coleman and see how wrong we were. I've taken a glance and it is really ugly. And can I, can I tell you how confident I was when I made these predictions? It's bad. But just another thing, I think that shows how good the league is. Mm. The fact that you can be so far off in predictions just shows how flippy floppy teams can be in the regular season. You compare it to like the Premier League. I know nothing really about the Premier League. You can I know still put, City, Arsenal, yeah, Liverpool, yeah. you know what I mean? You still put teams relatively <laughs> exactly. in, the right, in their right position. Yeah, yeah. So obviously Richmond finished in 18th this year. I I had them in I had them finishing fifteenth. I had them in fifteenth as well. Okay, okay, so three places off. It's not it's not that bad. I think there were some brave souls who went that far and predicted them to win the wooden spoon, but it was rare. A lot of people had them around where we had them. We knew that they were gonna have a poor season, and I don't feel too horrible about that one. Couldn't have predicted that they'd have two wins. Okay, who let's go to seventeenth. Seventeenth uh, was North Melbourne. Oh wait, I did get this one. And back I on. absolutely nailed this prediction. I nailed it too. North Melbourne <laughs> finishing in seventeenth. We absolutely <laughs> smashed it. Moving it into the next one, West Coast finished sixteenth place. I had them finishing eighteenth. I'm assuming you did as I well. I had them in eighteenth as well. Yep. Um, they had a slightly better season than what we thought they were gonna. They were gonna do five wins at least. They're on the up. We'll say that. It, it's. It's still there. It's, it's still dark. They're on the it's up. Still dark, they're on yeah. the up. It's better than uh, what North North produced this year. There's not any light at the end of the tunnel yet, but they're starting to get some radio signal and like one bar of 3G. I like yeah. it. I like it. <laughs> 15th place was Adelaide. Do you want to start here? <laughs> um, I think mine might be a little bit worse than yours. I, I'd like to finish 6th. Okay, oh, yeah, I killed it. I have them in 7th. This on. guy. The expectation <laughs> off the back of just missing the finals by an umpiring decision last year to having a terrible season this year. Not too many injuries mm. either. I just know Damian Barrett had them coming fourth, and so I feel better about myself. Oh, yeah. But we're okay. We're okay. <laughs> we're okay, but I think a lot of people got Adelaide wrong. And, you know, while I say that this was ugly, the season, so much unexpected. Uh, there were so many unexpected happenings and, and tropes, and Adelaide was maybe the main one. 100%. In 14th place finishing was Melbourne. And when I tell you this is probably my worst one, that was absolutely my worst one. I had Melbourne fourth. Okay, I had them in eighth. So oh. far, I am. This guy's an idiot. I am a genius. But no, it's. Melbourne were awfully disappointing. You had the preseason stuff, which we knew about when we made these predictions. Yeah. Um, that's why I thought I was making a really bold prediction by putting them as low as eight. I remember I talked about it in the predictions. I said. You've got this off-season stuff. You've got Clayton Oliver, who might not be at his best, who's so important for them. I think, oh, they'll drop to eighth. They dropped to 14th. And they've been consistently a top-four side. And obviously, Petrarca was a huge part of that. When we made the predictions, Brayshaw yep. wasn't retired yet. Gorn had a, had a <laughs> pretty, pretty much pretty every, big absence. Clayton everything, Oliver. Everything went wrong for Clayton Melbourne Oliver, this year. who's best and fairest multiple times winner. He's had an awful season. Yep. But yeah, we'll, we'll move on. Uh, in 13th place was Gold Coast. I had them to finish in 10th. I had them in 10th as well. Okay. So, we're not too bad there. They should have made finals. They really should have made. <laughs> All they had to win was a couple of those easy away games. They just couldn't get it done. There's always next year, though. There's always next year. 12th place finishing team was St. Kilda, and I absolutely nailed it. St. Kilda, 12th place, tick. 12th um, place, I... Two predictions correct. Now let's move on to 11. I want to hear what you had them because I know you <laughs> rated them highly. I would chatted them up so much. Oh uh, yeah, and where were they put, I put them in sixth. Sixth place. No, I can't really talk. I had Melbourne in fourth. To be fair, the last eight to nine weeks of the year, especially the last like sort of five to six weeks, have shown us what I was saying. That they had the personnel and they had the the coach to get it done. But what was Ross doing? He couldn't. He got them kicking no goals. They couldn't kick more than nine goals in a game for how many straight games? It was ridiculous. They were just playing a pretty dumb system which had no movement uh, and they lost a lot of games early. Finished in 13th. In 11th... Oh, 12th. In 11th place was Essendon who were looking at finals most of the season with top four for the first part of it. Was, okay, I'm way better than you. I'm I have way to better. scroll down a little bit. I had them in, <laughs> I had them in 16th. Yeah, what were you thinking? 
I just didn't back them at all. I had them in 13th. So the start that they had to the year where they were sitting in what? They were sitting in the top four at the end of round 15. Were they? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, they were close. They were. They were I close. think they were. I I think around 17, I said they were one of my locks. <laughs> you did. For top eight. And where did they finish? Absolutely nowhere near it in 11th place. Yeah, so I had them in 13th and I did a pretty good job there. In 10th place, disappointing last game of the season, Fremantle, who were looking like one of the flag favourites about halfway through as well, talking about the topsy-turvy season that we've seen. 10th place. Lose four straight to finish it. I had them in the 16th when they were pushing for a top four spot until the last four weeks, pretty much. Uh, Looked like they were going to get it until the last four weeks. I was so surprised because in the off-season, they lost... Uh, they've lost Blake Akers over the last couple of years. They just lost Liam Henry. Lockie and Schultz. Lockie Schultz. And uh, I, I know another, another pretty important piece that I'm forgetting, but their list management hasn't been good. Luckily enough, they have enough talent and Justin Longmuir has done a pretty good job that they pulled it together this year. I do feel I don't have a lot of bad things to say about them. Just an unfortunate, tough, tough fixture that they had. So a lot of tough teams that they played twice at the end of the year. And they just couldn't get it done in those games. We do games. expect a lot more from Frio next year, especially with Shea Bolton. Oh, Looking who, like he's going to be joining the Fremantle Dockers. And they'll overpay, and they should, because he, he'll be a great addition for them, and I think he'd, he'd be there for the rest of his career, probably. He's a Western Australia boy. That would be great for them. 100%. In ninth place, the Premiership winners, Collingwood. Mm. Now, I had them quite high up. I thought they were going to back up their season. I had them in second place. <laughs> okay, I thought mine was ugly, and he was sort of saying the opposite. He was saying, yeah, I was pretty good. <laughs> he was a terrible... My, I had them in fourth. Like, every time, mine's just slightly not as bad as you. Hey, who's had two <laughs> correct so far? Bang on the money. We can't argue with that. Uh, yeah, so Collingwood, I had in fourth. I think... It, uh, I keep trying to justify it, but yeah, we got it wrong. Uh, but I think it, we just thought that they'd back it up. Uh, they It was such a promising... <laughs> from, I know, the grand final win. Of course, you think they'll, they'll just back it up. But maybe the signs were there, just so many close games. I mean, like I said, it's an absolute testament to the league mm. that we can be so far off in predictions. Mm. I absolutely love it. Moving into the top eight, by the skin of their teeth, Carlton finishing in eighth. Wasn't far off, I had them to finish in seventh place. I had them in fifth. And I think without the injuries, maybe they do finish either in somewhere from fifth to seventh. Uh, and I don't mind my prediction. I like it. The story of the season. Hawthorne, 0-5, finished 7th, a game outside of 2nd place. I had them in 13th. Didn't expect this much from them this season. We loved, we raved about their back end of the year last year, we and we still couldn't bring ourselves to back them. I didn't think... Because I, I had them in 14th. There were a lot of dead games that they won, even though they were against good sides. I just didn't think they were going to be able to do it this well this season. But yeah, fair play to them. Top eight, going to be yep. absolutely charging this final series. And what a season they have to look forward to next year. Seriously. Sixth place, the Western Bulldogs. I had them finishing in ninth. I had them I in had 11th. Them. Um, it was. It's always really tough around the middle of the ladder, but I've just seen that Bevo seems to continually fail to, to push them into a good final spot. Uh, he's pro- you, could, uh, you could argue that about their sixth place. Their list is ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I just... Thought that there were teams that excited me more, and I, I probably should have should have seen this one coming. Next team had a terrible start to the season. Looked like they were going to bounce back and get a top two spot. Brisbane, who finished in fifth, fifth spot. I had them finishing first. I had them I, in second, uh, and just the grand final last year was quite unfortunate. They they so could have easily won it, and we just know that their team is so strong all over. The coaching strong. It's guys that have been together for a while but are not aging and getting too old. Everything's just... They're in the slot of the premiership window. Um, don't get that double chance because of their start to the year. But uh, if not for that slow start, our predictions weren't too bad. Moving into the top four, a team that was so close to the grand final last year. Backed it up this season. Fourth place, GWS. I had them finishing in third. So I was pretty close. Wasn't that, far off. You've done really well. Going into the season, I was red hot on them as my premiership favourites. I just looked at their list and just thought, wow, there is unbelievable top-end talent everywhere, and I had them in first. Like so, 
and Bass uh, an injury to Sam Taylor, they probably would have finished a little bit higher. Moving into the team that never disappoints. I mean, what a what a thing would be to be a Geelong fan. I mean, they had, we had I mean, people say ex- that about Sydney just as much. True, but-, but we had a little expectation for them going into this season. They finished in third. I had them in 11th place. And I thought I would have been potentially pushing overs in 11th. I stand by my call having them in 12th. I actually remember... We don't. We don't get too. We weren't getting too many comments at the start of the year, but there was a some angry. There was some angry comments are saying you are dumb on Geelong. They you're talking about how they're aging. They have young gems. That I think people name dropped Max Holmes. Someone might have even name dropped Zach Guthrie, and I thought that they were stupid. And Zach Guthrie was pushing for an Australian spot, so was Max Holmes. They they seem to always their young guys just just turn good Lawson Humphreys where did he come from maybe the most composed and double footed 19 year old I've ever seen like where did this guy come from they just breed him out in Barwon heads out in the towns outside Geelong and they just come in there and start playing incredible footy the ability to rebuild on the run Mm. they were a really old and aging team last year Hawkins is now retired Tilly's now retired they finished third with a bunch of young guns they don't don't need those guys anymore it's they're not they're not going to go anywhere next season I'm not going to make the same mistake when we make predictions for 2025 moving into the top two a team I did not think were going to finish this high up on the list looking really shaky in the mid part of the year Port Adelaide I did have them in the eight I had them finishing eighth I had them finishing ninth, um, but Ken Hinckley, props to him, was getting booed yeah. as as much as they wanted, nine weeks they ago. They wanted his head, the poor fans. Nine weeks ago, he was getting booed, and now they finish in second place, as good as first, because you just get home finals all the way through to the granny and the double chance. Um, what can you say? He gets it done in the regular season, Here's but we've known that. Here's where the test begins. Trying to deflect from our predictions here, but we predicted it pretty poorly. But yeah, it's it's Port fans should be excited that they, they keep giving themselves really good shots to get it done. Now, top spot, been top spot most of the year. Our Sydney Swans, the team we love. We're going to be there on grand final day. Should they, should they go all the way? I had them finishing just outside the top four in fifth spot. And I had them in third. Ooh. I was hotter on them than you, you were. You backed them a little bit more than I did. I really thought that the I knew that I knew that Brisbane was so strong, but outside of that, I thought GWS they might be the best, and I thought Sydney are the next up after GWS and Brisbane. So I I, I had Sydney in third place. So I had two correct, and you had one correct. <laughs> is, 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 okay. Is correct. Move on to our next one. Now, obviously, the Brownlow hasn't been announced yet. But we can get a pretty good idea if we're correct or incorrect. Well, I, do, I have my Brownlow predictor, so I can tell you exactly where your guy this is. This is true. I'm aware that mine is not correct. I had Errol Golden to win the Brownlow. Which, hey. Not that bad. He had to deal with some tagging this year. Deal with some tagging. Obviously, Heaney absolutely exploded and took a lot of votes off, off him. Can I tell you, my predictor has Golden on 18 votes at about 12th or 13th. Which is, hey, I'm not too disappointed. Yeah. I'm not too disappointed. Who do you have? I think my guy, I had on the exact same amount of votes or one vote higher. I, t- I predicted Tom Green. Oh, okay. uh, I went a bit boring, but with one of the real betting favorites because he is a standout midfielder that racks up by far the most of the ball on a team that was always going to get a lot of wins this year. So you just do the maths. He was always going to be a Brownlow fancy. That's what I went with, but just, just didn't accumulate. I don't think too many huge games this year, but who knows? We'll see. Moving into our prediction for the Coleman medal, obviously, congratulations to Jesse Hogan. Absolute superb season from, from the struggles he's had early in his Big career. margin in the Coleman, too. Yeah, 100%. I had Larky to win the Coleman. Now, he had a really good season last year. When I was listening to the video at the start of the year, my, my reasoning was North have to get better, and I think they'll be more service into the forward line. And somehow they did not get better. Somehow they did not get better. I couldn't have been more wrong, and he just didn't get the service. I picked Charlie Kerno. Did he end up second or third? I think it was second. Uh, always a pretty safe prediction. He was never going to be too far off, but props to Jesse Hogan. I'll just confirm. Yeah, he finished second. Yep. Moving into who we thought was going to be in the grand final. So maybe we still have a chance to be right. I still have a chance that both so my teams I. are in the eight. I have Brisbane versus GWS. I had GWS versus Brisbane as well. I believe you had Brisbane winning it. I had Brisbane. And I have GWS winning it. There's still a chance we're absolutely nailed under that prediction. And we better fucking not be right because Sydney better be there. Come but... on. I hope you enjoyed this video. Just like we did previewing the season last year, we're going to be doing a review on every single one of the 18 teams looking at their season that's just gone by. 
looking into their season that we're going into in 2025. We're going to look at the draft. We're going to have all of that trade period. And follow along with us in finals. The season's not done yet. We'll be releasing loads. We'll be chatting about everything that's happening in finals. I think you'll be seeing, as the, we get closer and closer to grand final day, you'll be seeing more and more Swans gear on the both of us as we get excited. Hopefully, Swans stay in it. Stay with us. There's lots more to come. We'll see you on the next one.